morning everybody. Today is day number seven, I think, on the water. Today's Friday, we left last Friday. Yesterday we spent the day, the afternoon, at Hoffman's K, exploring Hoffman's Blue Hole, and I mean, incredible. Just, I can't say anything else besides it's purely incredible. I think today what we're gonna do, um, because Carlton needs to fly out um, next week, I think like Tuesday or Wednesday, and today's Friday. What we're gonna do, we're gonna, as much as we wanted to stay and explore the berries more, um, the only airport around here is Chubb Key, and the docking fee to you know to go to land and dock car, get drop off Carlton is like astronomically expensive. So we are going, and Exuma's just opened. And apparently, I've never been there, but apparently that's the most beautiful part of the Bahamas, from what I hear. So what we's going to do is leave this afternoon around high tide get out of these flats here on the berries because you saw yesterday we had a little bit of trouble with those um so we're gonna try and time it right on the high tide to get out of here and then um head down towards chub key anchor up there for the night and then sail down to the exumas tomorrow well we move the boat we're gonna check out another blue hole here that's apparently in the middle of the water. And I think I see it right here, coming up. So we're gonna, gonna go snorkeling here for a bit. And then, I don't know, we'll figure it out as we go. So they dropped me off in a dinghy at this blue hole, which by the way, was not on any chart uh sailing guide and we just found it by looking at google maps satellite view and you can see here so it's in the middle of the seagrass flats right and then as you come up to it there is a, a steady angled slope down into the blue hole where it just kind of just drops um and it was full of life you can see here giant school of mangrove snapper swimming around and what looked to be either a big mutton or a kubera i'm inclined to think it's a mutton because i did see a spot towards the back half of the fish which is more indicative of a mutton snapper um but either way a couple really nice snappers swimming in there tons of mangrove snappers dude so many snapper I'm probably in like 30 feet of water. Well, I'm not at the, I'm not in the middle. I'm on the slope. There's snapper everywhere. Big, big, like 15, 20 pound mutton snapper down there. I later called for them to go get my Hawaiian sling so I could shoot um, either at that big mutton that you could see there way off in a distance or some of the nice mangrove snappers, but we uh we didn't have the chances to sit around and, and you know have a nice fish dinner. We were trying to move today, so unfortunately I didn't do any spear fishing, but you bet I wanted to do some. Really wish I was better at free diving, yeah. Here's a, it looks like a big black grouper down there but he's like 30 40 feet down i can't free dive that well i can maybe hit like 15 maybe 20. this is pretty deep but maybe we get the hawaiian sling out let's keep looking around yes yeah, so you could see in a distance past the school of snappers there's what looks like it's a drop off right so you had the slope that uh came down um from the seagrass you know that white sandy slope and it just at a gradual angle just shoop fell right down in there and it looked like a straight drop but i mean look at all the snapper i was just swimming in a school of mangrove snappers they didn't care that i was there they'd come up to me swimming all around me you know if i wanted to shoot one it was point blank shot it was it was great uh, it was pretty incredible to see 
and yet you could see just you know out in the distance there was the uh, the flats so I spent the rest of the time just swimming around seeing what I could find and just appreciating this drop-off seeing all the schools of fish I mean there's a giant school I don't know what those were they kind of looked like goggle eye for a moment but I wasn't 100% sure while I was in the water but just giant schools of fish just sitting there on this drop-off I think there was a school of uh, senates too which are a type of barracuda yeah there's a school of senates here I got to dive down closer to one of the ledges and you can see where that's where the end of the sand and it's like start of the rock I think that was a kubera that I'm pretty sure is a kubera because if you look at it there's no spot on it there's nothing there that's not a mutton snapper and it looked to me like it had a larger jaw profile unless it's just a gigantic mangrove snapper um if you guys think differently in the comments let me know down below i mean just giant schools of bait and there's a big old sharky back there so i did not want to go out into the middle and i don't know what other sharks are sitting out in the middle but i was content to free dive the edges and and, and see what was lying down on each you know ledge drop like this so you could see some reef fish some angel fish grunt sitting down there but the water was cold down uh i was probably 20 feet down uh, and the water was starting to get colder down there so i came back up to warm up a bit that water is cold down there that is freaking oh I'm not doing a very good job of conserving my oxygen. I'm pretty out of shape. <sighs> and in the cooler water, it's harder to conserve oxygen down there. So I apologize for not being able to stay down there long, but damn, it's beautiful. It would be awesome to scuba dive here or just get in better shape so I can free dive. Would be the easier solution. But, oh my goodness, look at this. It's rolling over. Middle of goddamn nowhere. I thought I saw a shark out in the middle. I could try and swim out there, but it's getting kind of cold out here. So I might hang around here for a little bit longer. I'd love to see that Kubera again. That was, I thought I had seen that before and I thought it was a mutton. No, I thought it was a grouper, but I saw it in the distance. And that time you came right up to me. Now it's a Kubera. 1,000%. I think I'm pretty sure it's a Kubera. I think. I don't know if they get dog snapper over here, but I'm pretty sure that was a Kubera. Had massive jaws, dude. Oh my god. So I think the second fish I saw was a Kubera because it didn't have the same spot on the back side of the tail as the um, as a mutton snapper did, in the, the first one that I saw. So it might have been two separate fish. One was a mutton, one was a Kubera. Unless the Kubera was just a gigantic mangrove snapper, which sometimes, you know, they'll often look like mangrove snappers, but I, the jaw, the jaw structure on that one was too big, in my opinion, to be a mangrove snapper, but... Let me know down below in the comments if you, you know, what you think that second fish was, uh, or any of those fish, either the mutton snapper one with the spot or the one without the spot, which I think was a kubera. So here, if you look in the distance, there that appears to be a leatherback sea turtle, because of a big black shadow, and it was it was probably 40 feet down, and the visibility in there wasn't great because we had a lot of rough weather recently. But that looked to be a giant leatherback sea turtle, and those. From what I recall are very rare, very rare or at least uncommon. Um, so that was a really cool sight to see, although it was, you know, a fleeting glance. Um, but he was, you could see that ledge right there where it just drops off and that sea turtle, that leatherback was riding on the edge of that uh, drop off. Uh, and I just saw him in passing and dove down as quickly as I could to see him. Um, but yeah, no, that was, that was a really cool sight to see. I know it was a short glance, but I had personally had never seen a leatherback in person until that moment. So what was interesting here is a whole school of zero mackerel just cruising around. Um, so I'm inclined to think that given that I had caught a zero mackerel the previous day in one of the prior videos, maybe there was just a whole school of them. Like there's there schools of them that was moving around the flats. Um, and there was a school here just in the middle of this blue hole. So that was really cool to see. I was definitely not expecting to see, you know, schools of mackerel balled up on the flats like that. But 
that's why you go exploring to see what's around. So at this point, I had been at the blue hole for probably about 30 minutes, 30, 40 minutes, and we needed to start heading back to the boat because we were trying to find a way out of these islands, right? Because the flats are super shallow. And uh, we wanted to be able to get the, hit the tide right so we can get to deeper water. So here I am coming back to the boat after a little session of snorkeling and uh, head back on board to get ready to navigate. That was pretty incredible. Okay, bring the ladder up with you. Yeah. We just drove over that blue hole that I went swimming through and the depth gauge read 95 at its steepest point. So it's pretty crazy that drop. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're over it. Far. Yeah, 90 feet. The first pass we did we hit 95. I mean, I saw a faint like uh, glow at the bottom, but like yeah. you can see it there. You, it's, it gets deep. It just drops. Oh my God! Look at that beach. All right. Well, it looks like we've navigated. Turn the port a little. Port. Uh oh, it's a sh stop. Head to starboard, the deeper water's over there. This is getting shallow. Oh my god, look at that beach. We've had an interesting situation tr trying to navigate around these flats here and get out to some deeper water. But it looks like we finally have gotten into some deeper water and there's the inlet dead ahead of us that we're looking for. Looks like there's a cut through that flat that runs to that north inlet. But everything else here looks fine. But oh my god, look at that flat, boyo. Look at that flat. What's up, baby? What up, man? Dude, look at that flat. Behind you, that, that shallow sandbar. Tell me that don't look pretty. I'm, I'm up here navigating, pointing left, right, straight. What are we reading? Okay, okay. I guess we keep our current heading. Yeah, right. I feel like it'll. I feel like an old time ship. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, even with this rough, you know, winds, you could still see the bottom pretty clearly. Oh my God, dude, that beach looks so insane. Hopefully once we anchor up, we can do some flats fishing on that sandbar over there. That, to me, yells bonefish. I don't see another boat for miles, dude. This is, this is crazy. It's just a sand flat and a deep channel and another sandbar. Wow. So here we were navigating in between two sandbars and we were riding a very, what was initially a very tight pocket of deeper water through the flats opened up into a wider channel and we were essentially riding a channel in between two sandbars. We were heading towards some islands that had some deeper water and we were uh, a pass, an inlet, natural inlet that had some deeper water just trying to get out of the shallows and we had the rising tide we had a tide in our favor so we wanted to take advantage of it while we could so i was up on the bow navigating pointing around saying hey go here turn to port turn to starboard you know looking out for shallow water because when you're in these areas the maps are wrong <laughs> the navigational charts are often wrong so the only way to safely navigate is by visually navigating right looking around and judging is this water shallow enough is that is this deep enough uh can we where can we go what is the path up ahead through here and it's definitely a really cool experience you know it's charting your own charting your own course um 
with and with all the technology and the mapping that we have these days, it it feels pretty rare to have to do it. But when you have to do it, it's I think it's a very exciting, challenging endeavor. So I hope you guys enjoyed this segment of the trip. Next segment of the trip, we found a nice spot to anchor up and did some exploring and some fishing on a nearby island. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this segment of the trip and also the prior videos and you know, prior segments of this trip. If you haven't watched them already, highly recommend doing so. So drop a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and we'll see you guys at the next island.